Hello, welcome to HR Huddle today with me is Jen. Hey, Jen. Hi. We are glad to be here. It feels like it's been a few weeks with our schedules and travel and vacation. So we're excited to be back with you again together. Um, today, we were talking about, it came up in a previous HR Huddle, this idea of uh, psychological safety. And uh, we thought we would explore that today and see where it takes us. Um, and so I'll do a little bit of setup and Jen, you can jump in here and then we'll maybe talk about some ideas of what we can do to uh, uh, promote psychological safety. And so the idea is when we talk about psychological safety, um, it, it is really to say, how do we make it feel safe for our team members, for our partners, uh, to be able to express themselves, to be themselves, to raise ideas, um, you know, share change that they would like to see, provide feedback. I mean, there's a whole list, right? But it's how can they be expressive and have it feel safe? Um, where the opposite might be, where there's not psychological safety is where we might, you know, shut down ideas or we might make comments about people's dress or how they uh, show up to work or uh, not uh, be working because they're remote. Some of those things we've talked about with remote, but we can make it feel very unsafe. And there might be some behaviors or comments or even culturally things that we do that makes it feel unsafe. And it could be pockets within our firms, or it could be as a firm, our organization as a whole uh, is not really considering this idea of psychological you know, safety. So uh, Jen, what would you add to kind of set this up or the definition? What would you add to what I described? Well, I mean, I, I you, you described it awesomely. The reason that we care about psychological safety is because it fosters innovation and creativity. It um, it it garners um, trust, and it causes people to stay in your organization. And a lack of psychological safety creates all sorts of toxic behavior, incomprehensible toxic behavior. And um, leaders who do not create or foster or support a psychologically safe environment for team members cannot work at your firm any longer if they cannot be coached, counseled, or encouraged to improve. And if they can't genuinely improve versus taking it underground. Um, and it, it would be on our top five or six list. I think, Tamara, uh, we've been using an, uh, a tree slide. I'll try to find it uh, while we're talking to say, if you do nothing else this fall, you have to do these five or six things. And one of them is get, you know, eliminate or remove bad bosses. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest attributes of a bad boss is creates a psychologically unsafe environment and makes people feel uh, scared, embarrassed, uh, diminished, demeaned, punished, um, you know, uh, fear of retribution, uh, anybody in a senior position in your organization that throws their weight around and makes people feel small or scared is an, the ultimate anti-retention strategy. There's nothing that can chase your people out of the place faster. And so when, when I and, think in high school, we call that bullies. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, and, and bullies can be pretty overt about it, Tamara. Yes. A hundred percent the bullies. Uh, but they're also like manipulators. Right. Uh, you know, there are people that um, sometimes it's like the firm administrator who doesn't get you a parking pass because she doesn't like you, you know, or he doesn't like you. Uh, you know, you can't seem to get, you know, order supplies and they don't come or, you know, like there's all kinds of ways to mess with people. Uh, it doesn't always have to be like that bull in a china shop kind of bullying that we all picture getting yelled at or um, sometimes it's other sort of passive aggressive junk right. that happens in the background, uh, whatever it is, it's not nurturing, compassionate, caring, empowering, uplifting, inspiring, motivating, supporting, developing. Those are the kind of adjectives we want to be able to use about the leaders in our organization. That's what they're doing. You know, they're supportive. They're a developer, uh, not, um, you know, boy, are people uh, are pretty intimidated by him. I, you know, they're uh, decently scared of him or, you know, it's hard to find people to work on her jobs. 
uh, you know, those are just, um, and, not, and we're not saying every leader should be perfect, right? We're not, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to be imperfect. We haven't been trained to be all those wonderful adjectives I mentioned. Um, you know, we could be developed and coached and made better and we can all work to get better as inspiring, motivating leaders. But I don't think firms pay attention to like, how safe does this environment feel? And Tamara, it's interesting because I don't know if we, when we've done employee engagement surveys, if we've ever asked a question about I safety. I don't know that we have either. Mm -hmm. um, I think we, when we've asked about safety, it's been health and safety, like COVID, right? right? right. Um, but not like psychological safety. So that's kind of an interesting yeah, thing. That is interesting. And I don't know, I'd have to go back and look at the 12 questions, Gallup's 12 employee engagement questions but nothing is reminding me of psychological safety. I'm sure there's some components of it that lead to that. But anyway, just yeah. uh, it's something we don't talk about and pay attention to. And it starts, of course, with us, like, not right. like, you know, like, am I creating a psychologically safe environment? Am I being empowering and compassionate? And really the number one hallmark of psychological safety or, or, um, you can tell if you are or not, is it's okay to make mistakes with me or with us or here. Right. Mistakes happen or to say the wrong thing, um, to make a mistake in speech or to raise an issue related to a sacred cow in the business that everybody else knows is a sacred cow, that it's okay to do that. Okay. And, and you'll be listened to and ask questions about it and tell me more. And those are the kinds of responses that you would get when it is psychologically safe. And you were making me think of, you know, another, you know, maybe covert way that, you know, we don't promote psychological safety is in our niceness in the profession as leaders and conflict avoidant. Mm -hmm. We let things happen. That, sorry, <laughs> poking on one of your. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> but we funny. let things happen, and we a and then words, exactly. Somebody so, raises an issue, you know, that's happening, you know, maybe with a certain team or team member or another partner, um, or there's, um, I was uh, there's gossip and triangulation happening, and we're allowing that behavior to happen. And instead saying, hey, we need to stop it and we need to talk about why and what the impact is. And instead of like, it'll handle itself or just stay out of it or, you know, just don't be a part of it or rise above or like we say all this crazy stuff. The next engagement manager will will address it if it's still an issue or, you know, like, uh, let's see if it works itself out, uh, you know, uh, the, we know the client's done this every single cycle, but, um, you know, maybe this cycle will be different. Right. We can't, we can't step over things. We can't sweep them under the rug, if you will. Um, and we definitely can't have, you know, double standards. Like I expect something different from you. And then I know it's okay over there. I'm not going to deal with it over there, but I have a different expectation for you. All of those things, um, first, first of all, probably perpetuate a feeling of hypocrisy, which our young people have no tolerance for. And, you know, second, it's just not healthy, you know, for the business, we're not getting to the resolution and then it, it doesn't feel safe. And um, the other way I think we can um, perpetuate uh, a lack of psychological safety is humor, sarcasm, uh, you know, side jabs or comments. You know, we've uh, been with some leadership groups and, you know, they, they like each other. They have fun with each other, but it borders on almost like I'm going to be a, a, above somehow by keeping you down with side comments or jabs or, you know, personal things that are just to be, it's a joke or it's funny. And so those are other ways. And then, so for the individual, but also the people watching, it's, they cringe. It's like, if you start to feel yourself cringe, it's like, mm, that doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel good to be, you know, part of that group or part of that environment. So we really have to watch that and be careful of it. Yeah. And, you know, you're reminding me, Tamara, that, um, you know, this idea, I, I recently had a conversation with somebody and uh, we were talking about some issues with somebody upstream from them that they admire and respect and has mentored them. 
but is now doing a bunch of stuff that does not work for the organization. And um, I was trying to coach the person on, you know, way, different ways to raise the issues and different ways to give the feedback that would be, um, you know, positive and delivered with finesse and, and really delivered with love, right? And um, the person said to me, I'm just going to tell you, this person's going to get so mad and then, and then she's going to turn on me and she's going to point out everything I've ever done that was wrong, that she's never actually discussed with me that she was upset with, or it, she'll pull out a list of stuff that she's been thinking about and, and make me be defensive. Like, you know, well, what about you? You haven't, you know, released your time yet, or you, you know, like, not relevant to the feedback I just gave. Right. And put me on the defensive where I'm like reeling and trying to defend stuff that may or may not matter in the grand scheme of things. But right now it's like, if I bring up this and I'm going to get punched with that and this and that, and I know that, and it's happened every time I do it. And so I'm not even going to try. And that's the beginning of our people stopping saying their truth. And if we don't hear our people's observations and their truth and their feelings, and we don't give them the space to um, raise ideas and issues and give us personal feedback about who we are being for them and what we could do to be better for them. If we don't do that and they stop speaking that to us, their truth, then they either start speaking it to other people and that creates triangulation and, and you know, we're the emperor with no clothes or they start speaking to other organizations and firms about a job. Mm -hmm. um, or, or, they, or they shave off their performance and they, they kind of become a, a sad sack, you know, kind of dragging themselves through their job, which is not what we want to cause. Right. So we can't ever be the person that um, diminishes people's input, throws a blanket, a wet blanket over it and makes it so they just don't feel like they could do it safely. Right. I think another place to look, Jen, when we talk about psychological safety is inside of our uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives and conversations and what are we doing in that area. Um, I, I think we still carry along maybe some old ways of being. Um, I was just, you know, with a firm and they were talking about it still feels like a good old boys club and women, you know, are not included. And I, I, I don't even know that it's intentional anymore. Um, it's just, we're not addressing it. We're just like, we can't, it, it, that's one of those sacred cows. We can't address that. Or, you know, when we look at, um, you know, just, uh, different comments as we're talking about, you know, uh, racial equity, or, you know, we are talking about, you know, just different, um, programs that we might have. And again, comments are made, or we're doing things that are not inclusive that makes it not feel safe. Like I really can't be one of you. That sense of belonging that we've been talking about um, is not really manifested because we're not willing to put on the table, hey, these comments or these kinds of clubs or these kinds of outings and activities don't work anymore because they are not inclusive right. and it doesn't feel safe for people. And that is, I know that's hard. <laughs> to bring up. And I know that's hard to say, can we have a conversation about it? But we've got to be doing that. Um, and I think I think some of those things come to our HR professionals. You know, that's where it comes through. And it, it is up to you then as an HR professional to raise it at a partner meeting or to talk about it in a department meeting um, to the team leaders or the partners and say, we need to talk about this and how today in 2022, um, this is occurring for those people, but also where it is not working when it's not working and explain why and what the impact is. Um, take those blinders off for people. And if they can't get the blinders off, we might need to say, well, we're going to do it anyway. Um, it's just we can't perpetuate that. So th that's another place I think we have to look at psychological safety. I 100% agree, Tamara. And I, I really think that um, we have to recognize that there's a lot that doesn't work anymore, mm -hmm. that life has changed. The ball has moved or the, you know, the puck has slid forward and that, that we have to be open as firm leaders and, and HR professionals 
to all sorts of feedback and input and that um, we need to almost like beg for it and then reward it, right. you know, like, thank you so much. Because, you know, if we're continuing to do things that underground, they're saying, wow, that is so racially inequitable. I can't believe our firm is doing it. That's like letting your firm walk around with a massive piece of toilet paper on its heel or something. I mean, it's a, the worst thing uh, to let your firm be up to things that are really, from a social standards perspective, um, not acceptable any longer. And so, uh, but leaders, you better be wanting wanting that feedback and embracing it and being open to it. And, and there's lots of ways to do it. Um, you know, we, we taught a whole or, or talked about uh, and, and debated a, a session, and I, uh, Caroline might be able to link to it in the show notes or whatever for this, um, on receiving feedback. Right. And, you know, how to do it with grace and what kind of phrases you could say and that sort of stuff. But, you know, the biggest thing is, is just to look at your environment and think, are we willing to basically let every single element of this business be up for discussion, including are the leaders of the organization that are leading the service lines, the industry groups and leading the firm itself doing are, are they the right people to carry us forward? Like from that piece of feedback all the way, that's a big piece of feedback, to the mm -hmm. tiniest piece of feedback, like maybe we really should add, um, you know, sparkling flavored water to the fridge. You know, I mean, like ranging in, in uh, you know, dramatic well, feedback. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's, you know, like if that's what everybody's drinking these days, you know, uh, and nobody really wants all the 16 kinds of, soda that we have anymore, then maybe we should be thinking about that. You know, what, whatever, whatever it is. We or can't not bring you donuts on, on uh, Wednesday mornings um, because we're trying to be health conscious, you know. Or, yeah, <laughs> it all sounds silly, but it, it, the point is we've got to be open to hearing those things. And also we have to look at the, and so that's the feedback piece is a big piece of it because innovation is what we're trying to foster. Get better is what we're trying to foster. We're trying to encourage people to try new things, knowing they're not going to do them well. So like the tone of review comments, uh, you know, and um, like the, um, you know, just the feeling of, of people going off and innovating ideas and, um, you know, how, how rewarded are they for that? And then also, do we let them try them even if we don't love them or that we aren't sure they'll work? You know, how much freedom is there? Um, jokes, Tamara, psychological safety can yes. get completely janked in jokes. Um, anytime you have the potential to embarrass somebody, you should not be saying it. So, and that is the basis for a lot of, um, comedy and humor is to take somebody or something and hold it up to scrutiny and make jokes about it. And everyone laughs. Um, we shouldn't be doing much of that at work. We got to come up with humor in a different way, and it can't be at the expense of somebody in the room or somebody not in the room. I don't care who's, you know, somebody, right, right. a client, a person that works on our team, um, a spouse of a person that works for us. I mean, I've seen all kinds of insane comments that people say that, you know, about how someone is dressed or, um, you know, about their, uh, you know, the cleanliness of their office or, whatever. And, right. and they're, they're said to sort of try to lighten the mood or make a joke or it's not, it, if it creates this environment where I'm afraid I'll be held up for ridicule. But well, and so again, that. the uncomfortableness of, of the other people, you know, they laugh maybe out of obligation or something, but it's, you know, it's an uncomfortable. If you watch the body language and the lack of eye contact and the lack of engagement, it's, it's not comfortable. It's not fun. And so we got to say, how can we have fun in different ways? What does that look like? And, um, you know, that's probably something to look at too, is 
what do we do for fun and how are we engaging each other and having that we do want to have camaraderie and social events and you know those kinds of things and we love it when we are with firms that genuinely like each other and enjoy being with each other but um then we sometimes we see pockets of uh oh um you know there's a little bit of uh maybe over the top use of humor or other things that are in place so i think that's important to pay attention to i do too tamara and i think um, just the idea of, you know, is this going to make us a destination workplace? That's a question we tell you to ask when you're doing strategic decisions or change decisions in the firm. How is it, how is this going to make our talent feel? Is this going to continue to be a great place to work? But also, what are we doing to make sure that this decision is going to keep having our people feel psychologically safe or you know, what are we as leaders doing to create the safety, bringing in some training or learning on the subject, doing some reading would be beneficial. Um, and just recognizing that right now, as we've talked about this subject, you probably have identified things you could personally do, but also you might have a couple of massive offenders in the business. Right. We usually are one or two. Or groups. There's little like clicks yeah. or groups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we have to stop and be real about that. And I would I would make it my life's mission between here and the end of the year to dramatically alter that in some way or some fashion. Um, I would not let that go into the spring busy season. I would not go in with a psychologically unsafe human being who's creating that kind of an environment. I just wouldn't do it. Yeah. So um, just to say that. And um Anyway, I just uh, I had promised to show some of the slides, so I'm going to see if I can pop it up here as you're wrapping up, Tamara. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm hope I'm hoping it's trying to make me upload the file instead of just share it, which mm -hmm. is irritating. It's got a present mode now, um, so I'm not really sure that it's going to let me pop the slide up. But what we'll do is we'll put that slide somewhere into the social media for this. Yeah, we'll share it and. and uh yeah, because it's got it's got several things on it that we've been talking about, and that also you should be paying attention to between now and the end of the year. Um, and one of those is let's remove bad bosses, and a place to look at that. There you go, is you know this idea of psychological safety. And Google it if you haven't heard about it. Go read about it. There's you know articles about it in organizations, and some really really good you know research and authors about it. Exactly that little green leaf circle leaf over there that says remove bad bosses um and so we'll share this slide so you can look at the other ones as well um we've been talking about them like i said and if you have questions about this if this sparks some um, oh my gosh i never really had a name for it that might be what this conversation generated for you today reach out to us we'd be happy to talk to you about it um, or if you have other thoughts or questions or if you have resources yourself like you've been studying mm -hmm. it we're interested in that too so let us know so sure all right. Well, thank you for joining us today and listening in either live or to the recording. We appreciate it. And if there are topics between now and the end of the year, let us know that too. If there's something you want guys like ladies, I'd really love it. If you you know talked about this, we are interested in your ideas and feedback. So let us know. Otherwise, we hope you have a great productive week. You're enjoying the fall and uh, we'll be with you next week. Thanks. Thanks all.